to the Bougie Black Brother Network. Good evening and welcome to Minorities Report Podcast. Um, I'm Bougie Black Brother Michael. And we're focusing on our artists and entrepreneur and activists all around the community. And my special guest tonight is Marcus Williams, illustrator, artist, entrepreneur, and comic book aficionado. Good evening, Marcus. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Uh, aficionado. I don't get called that very often, so I appreciate it. <laughs> I threw out my vocabulary. I like to throw that out every now and then. And people say, damn, that guy's kind of smart. So I kind of <laughs> threw a little out there. Um, but I definitely wanted to have Marcus on. Um, my grandson is a book artist. And he's really into trying to create something of his own. And Marcus, uh, we, we saw a couple of his comic books and he saw your art. And then as soon as I saw his art, I was like, I got to talk to this guy because um, um, his art is, uh, is amazing. It's, it's culturally um, something to be proud of. And especially in this day and age right now that we're trying to get kids to be proud of who they are. Um, a lot of his illustrations and his comic books really speak to a lot. So, Marcus, um, quick background. We're, we're both in Atlanta, but I'm originally from New York. Um, are you a native uh, Georgian? No, no, not actually. Uh, I was originally born in Louisiana, um, but my I don't remember much of it. My mom remarried into the Navy when I was about three mm. and we moved out to San Diego, California. So um, I was actually raised in San Diego. But uh, we made our way back to Louisiana. I think I was around seventh grade uh, time period and then uh, hopped over to Georgia. And we've been here since about 96, 97. OK, great. So I'm, I'm officially in a I'm a Georgian now. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> I still call myself that. But uh, if you tap me on the show, I always go back to my New York roots. But uh, there you go. That's, there that's you how go. most people do. <laughs> But right. um, so where was the art coming from for you? Um, because I love the detail in your illustrations. I love the um, it's, it's a lot of power that you show within your art and the, the colors really attract you too. So um, quick background on your on your art history. Right. Um, I would say it's a lot of that comes from because um, I'm, I'm, I'm an 80s, 80s baby. Right. Uh, video games, I think, were, I guess, the first foray into colorful images. All these stories, uh, you know, with original characters, you had very, very vibrant characters, fantasy characters, uh, you know, things that I had never seen in cartoons. Now, cartoons, um, cartoons were absolutely a part of that because right. you were dealing with you know very animated and, and you know explosive characters on looney tunes uh you had ninja turtles back right. in the day and i mean ninja turtles uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles um i can honestly say really really impacted me as a young person because i'm like this is something that i never even thought could be you know, a real thing, but here it is. It all makes sense. There's personality. There's, you know, there's action to it. There's, you know, all of this, there's camaraderie, all this storytelling around something so ridiculous right. yet cool at the same time. So it really, really um, jump started my imagination at an early age, seeing a cartoon that had all of these elements. Now that I'm in, in hindsight as an adult, mm -hmm. you know, there was, there were some really powerful elements in that cartoon as silly as it was right. you know you had ninja, you know giant humanoid turtles that you know ate pizza and you know and fought against a big guy. rat you know exactly you know as ridiculous as it was they had some really really great storytelling that um uh i guess you know got a good message through but mm -hmm. visually uh the next thing was comics someone gave me a wolverine comic Ooh. um okay and uh, at the time, Jim Lee was drawing for Marvel and he was drawing for X-Men. And I mean, 
again, blew my mind in terms of now you have a dark anti-hero right. kind of character that was very tortured, had a terrible past, um, and yet he was somehow a good guy. Right. Right. And I'm like, wait, so he has claws popping out of him? You can shoot him and he won't die. What do you mean? You know, all of this, you know, exploded onto my brain. Like, this is now everything you thought, you know, was colorful and, you know, mm -hmm. funny. And it's kind of like what happened with hip hop. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, everything was positive, And then it's like, wait a minute, switch. Where are we going? Where are we going? Right. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, comics uh, introed. And then from there, man, it was like, the rabbit hole for me, Spawn came out, Image Comics happened, and I mean, the stories just kept getting more and more um, just daring. Right. You know, right. challenging what can we, what can we shock our readers with? And just that, that imagery just kept really, really inspiring me to keep going uh, creative with characters. So, so that's. Yeah. So were you emulating that or were you at that time? I'm just going back to that time. Were you trying to emulate it or oh, were yeah. you saying, I want to create my own at that point? No, no, no. Um, and I think that's, I, I speak that to a lot of young kids uh, these days. I, I, I visited an elementary school earlier this week. Um, I tell them uh, I was absolutely emulating. Uh, I said, if you, that's the way humans learn. Mm -hmm. If you walked into a, a dojo tomorrow and said, I want to learn martial arts, um, they're not going to teach you how to do backflips and, and spin kicks and the advanced stuff. They're going to teach you the basics right. and the basics for any skill is emulation. They're going to tell, you know, you go to martial arts, they're going to teach you some basic stuff and say, this is how you do it. Now you do it. And then you're going to emulate what they just showed gotcha. you. Someone that yeah knows, knows, uh, as may have mastered those basics, but, emulation is that first tool that you use. You use that for babies. You use that for tying your shoe. Um, if you're a mechanic, you know, you're going to have someone show you something and then you emulate that same process. Gotcha. So definitely emulated everything. So I was in like ninth grade drawing very gritty because Spawn was out at that point. So it didn't matter if I was drawing a teddy bear. It was dark and gritty and, you know, messy and all this because Spawn had that kind of style to right. it. So, uh, yeah, the teacher was very concerned. I was like, no, I'm good. This I'm good. This child, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I just like this. It's, yeah. Right. And it, and, it, right. and it was rebellious in a sense because, you know, your typical comic book was bright and heroic and simple. Yes. Um, but when, when the turn got there, especially image comics, um, mm -hmm. with, um, you know, the spawns and the, the, the different other yeah. ones that they said, we're going to make it darker. And those same artists before they left was doing that with Spider-Man. They were doing right. a lot with the Daredevil series. And, uh, and a lot of those kind of comic books really said, don't go with life isn't just happy all the time. And it doesn't end right. well because you're a hero. And then when you start reading those, so and, and when I'm looking at a lot of your your imagery and, and even, you know, my um, actually grandson and I was reading the Tuskegee, we were yeah. talking through the comic book. So it wasn't like we go to the comic book and we move on. You know, we had to talk with historic and that was really, really a great comic book because he looked at it initially as a comic book with people that he saw with himself. But I said, it's a little deeper than that. Let me kind of explain. And then the next thing I want right. to start, you know, because the younger they are, you can't give them a book that quickly. So we had them sit down and say, let's look at uh, Red Tails. Even though I hated it, at right. least gave you an image <laughs> of who they were and say, there you go. Now right. let's go read and, and find the details. So, so. Awesome. I got to, I got to commend you on, on doing that. That's exactly what we wanted. You know, um, anytime a, a, an adult purchases the book for a younger person, that is absolutely the process and the, you know, that, that that's what we want to happen. A lot of times uh, when people say, oh, no, I'm going to buy this book, man, we're going to collect it. And we're like, well, who, who are you buying it for? Oh, I'm going to buy it for my son. I was like, okay, no, no, <laughs> listen, please buy him another one if you want to collect it. It's, they have to get into it. They have to read it. They have to see the imagery. They have to actually understand there's history involved. So 
buy them another one, an extra one, you know, if you want to collect it and keep it in the plastic. But more so than that, have that right. dialogue. And I wanted it as a Sit tool. Down. And I think that's your intent to say it's not just yes. a book. Enjoy that. But it's a tool right. of learning. And uh, you put a modern Absolutely. spin to it. And I'm trying to get him to understand that, to say, you know what? You're an artist. You love to do things. You emulate that. You're creating stuff on your own, too, which is fantastic because I, I'm encouraging his uh, actual imagination and, and said, right, that's great. Um, do it like that. I know it's similar to a story that you've seen, but still keep your own characters. But what we're reading right now has so much more that you probably need to think about. Even if he doesn't create something similar to that, he has and it's something mm -hmm. that we sat down and shared and you contributed to that. So I, I really thank you for creating that. And then now I'm going to get the rest of the series. But so that what, is awesome. what put you in that position to and I, I kind of went over it too quickly. But uh, the comic book Tuskegee Airs, um, um, when we saw that and then and when I looked at it, I was like, hmm, interesting. Tuskegee, Tuskegee Airmen. <laughs> but it's the airs. Um, let me get this and I can use this. And when I brought it from you, my whole intent was to make it a tool. And um, and when I once I started reading it and and hearing how you changed the concept that no one should be flying. And uh, and this is almost a rebellious right. sense of all. I was like, wow, very creative in the writing and illustrated beautifully. Um, and, and if, and I, Thank you. if I keep saying how well you illustrate, I just love the way you illustrate because it, it pops for me and 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 the, the the colors and the tones and the inking is really so vibrant it's just popping off the um off the print which makes people gravitate toward that but that's the one um we basically talk about is skiggy airs so what made you yeah. actually say i want to create something like this um it was uh we were we were working on um me and, me and my uh, partner, Greg Burnham, uh, we've been working together for some years um, and we, we've we always had projects. Uh, where, you know, he's a father. He has two kids. I'm a father. I have two two young ones of my own. Um, but um, I was actually I had started doing a, a poster series called Young Heroes. And um, in that poster series, I would target, you know, published superheroes such as, you know, Marvel and DC. Um, I'd go to Luke Cage, I would go to Vixen, I would go to Storm, uh, Black Panther, Falcon, um, you know, and, and the list was so huge mm -hmm. in terms of all of these wonderful superheroes. And I should say wonderful in the sense that they can be wonderful if written appropriately, written, uh, written correctly. They were powerful characters, a lot of them. Um, but they, they, don't, they didn't have necessarily their own book. They didn't have their own series. Um, they're always in the background, you know, Side secondary characters right. or exactly, exactly. And all I did is I just made them young. I drew them as young, you know, uh, if not elementary, you know, um, age, uh, maybe teenager right. age as well. And I just I, I call it young heroes because young people didn't have anything that looks like they, they don't have anything like that on the shelves. Marvel and DC don't make young versions of Luke nope. Cage, Black Panther, Falcon, you know, in, in terms of targeting a young audience, especially young black right. kids. Um, and that makes it hard for a parent to say, I'm going to buy my kid a Black Panther comic. Black Panther is a like super, super complex story mm -hmm. that they've retconned a number of times uh, since he was created in 1966. Right. And to try to give that to, let's say, a 10 year old, that's a challenge. <laughs> right. You know, right. to say the least. So um, with these and they're just posters, they're just images. But those images are powerful enough. Um, when I started going to comic conventions as a vendor, I would speak to those parents. I would say, you know, and they would give me feedback. Hey, man, we love what you're drawing. I wasn't I wasn't drawing a lot of superhero stuff. I was actually drawing a comic called Hero Cats of Stellar City. Right. And so they it's exactly what it sounds like. It literally cats that are heroes. So <laughs> um, All right. these these young black parents uh, would come to me and say, hey, man, can you draw something for my kid? 
can you draw like a you know uh i don't know and they would they would pick a, a black superhero and and say can you draw something like that but for my kid mm-hmm. and that conversation at the time didn't really spark and resonate but i heard their frustration mm-hmm. that they walked the whole convention and had nothing that they could buy because either it was too sexualized it was too overly sexualized or too violent or too yeah too, yep. exactly too angry looking and it's just, this is a young child they're trying to put the posters on their wall and i'm like absolutely so i'm i'm sketching out stuff and so young heroes kind of got seated after you know that 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 kind of interaction happened a few more times and i'm like well, why don't i just solve the problem for them? right right and young heroes led up to me having over 30 i did a 30 day event um but i have well over you know 100 plus of them now uh, at least so we had a conversation fast forward a year or two after that and we have a conversation at a book signing an older gentleman was frustrated saying hey man you know what you really need to do something with aviation these kids have no idea about aviation and i'm like well i do this series called young heroes i was thinking about doing some young tuskegee airmen right uh, my business partner greg now this the the older gentleman he lit up and got super amped and excited he was like man if y'all do that <laughs> y'all can go into you know the airport y'all can do this this And so my partner Greg was sitting right next. He was like, "Man, we need to write something up about that." You know, the, some young Tuskegee Airmen. And within a week, man, I kid you not, we came up with a name. We had the basis of the story, the we set it in the future. We was like, you know, let's put some ro- giant robots in there, you know, wow. martial arts and weapons. Right. Everything came, you know, almost it, it came really quickly after that conversation. But the real meat of how we used it how we're like you mentioned earlier came with more you know deep conversations about what are we trying to do with the series mm-hmm. um adding the history at making the kids go all over the world uh uncover a lesser known you know historical you know sites such as you know there's more pyramids in Sudan than there is in Egypt um the omek heads you know the way they look you know uh we had a actual very specific conversation saying We don't want to necessarily buck up at history books that are in use currently, but if we can highlight some things that aren't in history books, we can actually make parents and or children that are reading this young people say, right. "Why didn't I know this? How come and we have adults that don't know about the Olmec heads. They don't know about Sudan. Mm-hmm. Um the Nazca lines, these are real, you know, the conversations we had initially mm-hmm. saying teachers should be, you know, educators, parents, anyone putting this book in front of young people should be able to say, "Wait a minute. I think I've heard of this. Let me google it." with right. the with the young person, you know, right next to him. But but and really really drive that home. But you're in a in a in a genre that's really big right now because we're sadly we're past a lot of reading. So we're yes. in a very visual based society. So mm-hmm. even with adults, they won't even think about what they learned in the past until something sparks them. And uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of like that too because that's what made me draw toward getting the comic book because I was like, "Wow, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about this. I need to show this my, my boys this." So this is why visuals are so important and and like you said, if I'm teaching you historic things, I mean, I put the details in there. But mm-hmm. if I can get you started and that's what you're doing. If I can get you started, then it's up to you to educate yourself further or to remind yourself that this is something that's part of your history that's really not being taught. So it's up to you to either uh re-educate yourself or educate your children and the ones that surround you. Right. So that's what to me is the <laughs> that's why this is so important. And um when when I'm looking at it I'm like wow I just got to keep handing this around right. especially to the the age and and, and the short term um yes. attention span with people who are like if I can show you <laughs> they got it and then they move on. So. Absolutely. Now that's a, and I I got to say just a testament to that is um I think the most rewarding part so far is that um like I said I visited well I visited two elementary schools recently um but the parent of I visited a middle school um last week and 
the the parent of one of the young ladies that that was in the classroom contacted me on one of these social networks and said my daughter w- came home and she was just too excited about everything that you're doing and i mean she tugged me from where i was pulled me to the computer pulled up your website showed me all the posters that you showed her and you know it was the the rewarding part is that they're genuinely excited about something that they had no idea was real history. Right. And right. I made sure to say that to say, you know, uh, how many of you know about the Tuskegee Airmen? Because unfortunately, every time I ask that question, only about, you know, four, if I'm lucky, kids mm-hmm. out of a, a whole classroom of 22 plus kids raise their hand. And I can actually say, okay, so that's a problem. Let's talk about it. Right. They're they're genuinely just excited with the visuals. They're looking at the comic. I show them, you know, the characters. I show them, you know, images and posters about, you know, the series. And by the end of it, you know, it takes them a little warming up, but they all have questions. They're like, so wait, why did you? Uh, I remember the young girl was like, why did you pick, you know, uh, you know, girls to be the pilots? You know, I'm like, uh, well, that's a great question. Because we put it, you know, back then they couldn't do that, but there's not enough of these leadership roles. So young girls can say, you know, these are the, the leader of our team is Ayana. She's a, you know, she's a 19 year old girl and um, strong, you know, um, smart, loves science. Mm-hmm. She is absolutely skilled and she's fierce all the, all the you know, all around, but she's more mm-hmm. like a, an older sister. She loves and has camaraderie for all of her fellow teammates. So she's almost like a big sister. And I said, right. you know, for us as creators, that was an easy choice. We have powerful women in our lives. Our mothers, uh, you know, uh, Greg has a sister. He said every woman that he's ever known has been able to whoop his butt, you know, at some point. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I grew up right. the same way. So that was easy to kind of there relate to. So it's very rewarding just to see that they're excited and they don't even know the history yet. They're just looking at the imagery. Right. So, But your imagery incites them to when history starts to be talked about, something to spark and say, wait a minute, if we walk talking about World War II, where was the Tuskegee Airmen in that? Because what I read, and I got a comic book, and then they can go on and on and on. But if they didn't even have that imagery, yeah. all they get is what they're being told. Right. And their history, whoever writes history, makes history. Mm-hmm. And if we can add and supplement to that and say, within history, there's more history. And then within history, it is our history. Right. And I think you do a good job with kind of um, adding that on top of everything. And so I wanted to segue into that with the way, because I look at your art and there's two artists that kind of, jump out that kind of remind me of similar to your art form. Um, Aaron Magruder Mm -hmm. is one and um, Takashi, I'm saying this right, Okazaki, uh, who did Afro Samurai. And his exaggerations, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just love because it's just, it's not humanly possible the way they move. But you stretch the body in, in, in certain forms and you exaggerate certain ways and it, it excites you because it extends your vision because you start from one point and it extends your vision outward and you do a lot of that and it, and it makes it more exciting. And, you know, look at Supernatural mm-hmm. that you have and, you know, the boots, how far in, but they look like right. our ladies. So when you see it, it's not like, Man, why is she shaped like, no, 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 that's our woman right there. So... <laughs> understand you seeing what's not true to us you may think it's off but uh but yeah so those two artists are are, you know i I love them from Mm -hmm. so long uh and even when he created that and they kind of extended it and and the color and everything you know your your art and your illustration kind of remind me of that but the other question even on top of that was you know you made like in Black versions, African American versions of this thing, Marvel characters. Mm-hmm. Do you get, is there any copyright issues or any infringement type things that you have to run into, or do you have to have permission and in, in, in based on that? 
Yeah, there's um, anytime you're talking about using licensed characters and, and selling them, there's absolutely a, a reality mm-hmm. where you can actually be prosecuted, or you know, there can be a cease and desist right, sent out right. to you. But um, the good thing is that I, I designed it for the comic convention world, and there's a, a legal mm-hmm. bubble that Marvel and DC would be just ridiculously stupid if they ever decided to prosecute the people inside that bubble. And I can say, you know, the quick way that I said it, it's it's a, a win, 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 win situation. Um, right. The publishers, the people that hold the licenses for these characters win because now fans have a, a place to go in just about every state now um, mm. throughout the year and relish in their fandom and love for their company you know for their favorite company whether it's marvel and dc image dark horse or more um there's there's a place for them to go and that's not it's not abundant anywhere else in life there's no such thing as you know a job that will tolerate that uh if you do if you're lucky but you know you can't do that in your daily grind it's it's these little spots that happen throughout the year where you can go and be it's okay to be a nerd and dress up like your favorite character. Um, yep. And uh, the city wins. Uh, when these when these conventions come around, you're talking about thousands of people that need to stay somewhere <laughs> in the middle of the city. And eat. Yeah, and eat, yep. sleep. Uh, you know, they want to buy. They got money that they've saved up all year and they, they need to buy stuff. So the city right. wins. The actual um, convention organizers they win because they're talking about thousands of dollars in a weekend just so right. people come in like i said enjoy themselves in the fandom and of course men that's where I, the next one is where i win it's it's the creative people that actually you know create the content for all of these fans so um if everybody's winning including marvel and dc um, there's no reason to to stop this from happening, and I'm talking about millions, millions of dollars every year. This the, this, this this convention circuit that happens, and it's been doing it's been going on. Um, New York Comic Con has well over a hundred thousand people every year. San Diego right. Comic Con uh, and all of the other big ones where I'm traveling to um, Green, uh, Emerald City Comic Con, Seattle, um, this wow. weekend. You know, four day convention. Just, I mean, four days of fandom, and, and they have to be, you know, multiple days as these conventions grow, because there's too much content, and uh, to yep. fit into just two days with some of these cities, and so it would be absolutely dumb, like I said. But now, if I try to make a book with these characters that are obviously, you know, um, a, bu- a head nod to you know a young falcon a young luke cage and i actually use those names then i'm asking for that trouble that would be that would be silly of yep. me i'm not trying to you know publish anything um outside of that, that wonderful bubble you know so anything right. that i'm doing outside right. of that yeah i can run into a cease and desist um but it's it's i, I because i go to so many comic conventions it's 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 uh, well within my scope to say I'm very successful in why I created it because these families are there. There's there's dozens and you know hundreds of thousands of people going for the purpose of what can I get my kid? I want to get my kid into comics. What can I buy them? And unfortunately, and this this is really unfortunate. As many talented black artists as there are at these conventions, professional and independent. There is not a lot of people rendering young black superheroes. Yeah. Wow. So they still just catering to what the yeah. masses or or what public uh, the publications say. These are the characters that I, that I need for you to right. illustrate. And it's it's I can't say that it isn't it's it's not happening. It's just not happening on a scale that can be felt. Like I'm still in a lane that isn't being well serviced. As, as I'm one artist, right. you know, and I'm I'm trying to draw as many as I can, but um, yeah, man, there's there's right. been artists in this industry, black artists, very talented, very skilled, and yes, they're catering to the adults, the teens. Um, they're drawing the same images, um, like I said, you know, and there's nothing wrong with it, but 
it's unfortunate mm -hmm. is what I call it, which is why if you have the skill, you know the problems, you know the industry, let's work together to change it. You know, no one needs to, 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 to force you to do it. You, you speak to the same parents I do. Mm -hmm. They come to your table, they're fans of your work. Yep. Let's do a concentrated effort to make that a uh, reality. At least yes. let it be seen. You know what I mean? It, it don't have to be, hey, look, I'm going to modify uh, an existing character. But if I'm creating characters and, you know, just having them there and say, wow, what is this? Hey, this is characters that I'm working on, blah, blah, blah. You have to have it next to what people Correct. would normally see. If I'm eating and I, I'll go to like a, um, a buffet. You always have the meat, you got your potatoes, but then all of a sudden you see something and like, what is that? That looks interesting. Oh, this is something we're trying that's new. Right. Try it out. If you keep seeing it, people are gonna try it and if they like it, they're gonna Correct. keep buying it. So that buffet, if it's not available, people aren't gonna buy it. Just, and they're not even gonna ask for it because they're about to say not if they don't even know it. that it's it's an option. You know, suddenly yep. to put that in front of them, it, it like you said earlier, you know, it's a visual market. It's a visual concept. Uh, this this generation has been almost forced into being a visual. You know, uh, think we have smartphones that are run by images and videos. Um, so just seeing it, just having exposure to it, it's like I like you said, I didn't. I wasn't even thinking about this. This is awesome. So <laughs> this is awesome. Let me let me get that for my my nephew, my son, my, my my baby girl would love to see this. She doesn't, you know, and those the the kids have it the worst because they are only. Playing. I was a part of this. We only process mm -hmm. what is fed to us. You know, yeah. we don't know exactly. that there's a problem. As a child, you're just like, oh man, Luke Skywalker, he's the greatest. You know, uh, and all of the other white characters yeah. that I've been pretty to. Exactly. <laughs> Harry Potter. Oh, I love Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah I want to be like, you know, there's not, there's not even a, <laughs> there's not even a group of right. African-American kids that's even within there that you group. You know, it's, it's crazy. But, but speaking of these, <laughs> and this is one of the main things that I really wanted mm -hmm. to get your uh, take on is, um, I'm a big comic book fan from the from way back when, and I, I was a follower of Black Panther, um, even when he was kicking everybody's ass um, from from the Fantastic Four to the people in the Avengers, and then he went about his business, and you didn't see him again. So when they had this movie and this totally cultural phenomenon has changed the way Marvel has to look mm -hmm. at black characters now i want Absolutely. your uh your take on that um well specifically you're, you're saying you know how does marvel yeah because marvel really gonna have to say let's start turning our pages and how many other black characters do we actually have that oh, we yeah. can actually use because uh, i think lifetime or i forget one of them mm -hmm. they have cloak and dagger because I, I used to even get them and and it was a issue couple you know the, the, the white girl and the, the, the boy who's, who's cloak and he's been used but they they trying to create a series mm -hmm. on that um but you don't see enough they haven't really created enough black characters for them to dig in but they're seeing the the, the phenomenon that people black folks will buy out right. theaters to see what yes. we want to see and they never expected that to happen correct Oh, uh, not in, not in this force. And and I told my I told my wife I said you can't you almost can't expect something you know uh, not not in great accuracy to mm -hmm. to blow up as big as this has. They've they're they're gonna they're gonna hit a billion dollars within a month. Yeah, you know? within, a, within month. a month. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. That's, that's, yeah. you're, you're shattering so many you know um, expectations or or even negative expectations because there was no data for this. I told, I told my lady, I said, baby, you're actually witnessing history because yep. this has never occurred. Not on this scale, not with this much money, mm -hmm. not with this many, you know, talented actors, uh, not with a mm -hmm. black director. This is all history in the making. And where we go from here is a huge question mark. 
because no one could yep. predict that this would have happened to this, you know, this this way. So um, I can absolutely say uh, I can I can speak to that, which is um, as <laughs> soon as they hit, I think it was four hundred million, uh, maybe four, mm-hmm. what is it, or maybe on the fourth, fifth day, I can't remember. Um, after the movie came out, uh, me and my business partner, me and my wife was like, okay, look, I said, uh, no, my wife said, you know, do you think they're going to make a part two? And I said, baby, look at me. Anytime you double your money <laughs> on a movie. <laughs> so this within within the, the first, first weekend, week. I said, baby, look, they would be the dumbest <laughs> business people on the planet. If they said, yep. you know, let's not make, we might as well make a part two. Um, and there's there's been movies that haven't been this successful where they've said let's just I think we did okay make let's a series. yeah let's make another yeah. one just to see but no I said they they probably uh, they probably got to start I got confirmation today actually that uh, yeah really? they they started casting for two Black Panther two wow. um, so yeah it, it, it's that kind of thing where um, no one can guess and, and but in my opinion uh, I'm a, I'm a huge <laughs> fan I did a, a fan fiction of Black Panther and Storm. I call it uh, Black Panther and Storm Heritage. In the, in the comic, um, you, you know, they got married. A lot of people missed that that yeah. arc for some reason. Yeah, they missed um, that. And of course, Marvel did the dumb thing. I, I consider it dumb uh, that they, you know, their marriage was short-lived. They got divorced not too long thereafter over some stuff. I think they could have squashed it. You know, what kind of pieces of what kind of got damaged. I got it. Uh, destroyed. But um, in any case, I did some art where I said, you know what? I, I don't want to, I don't want to ask questions. I just want to show what it could have been. So I called it, um, Black Panther and Storm Heritage. And I created two teenage, um, children for Black Panther and Storm. And just, I just made, I gave them names. I wrote the story. I, uh, when I, pr- uh, published this online, I actually wrote about two to three paragraphs for each each piece of art, each poster that I created, and I named yeah I made I named the uh, the son was Chidike. Uh, he was very much a fan of being a superhero X Men. He wanted to be like his mother, you know. And I wanted to create an right. Omega level mutant that was black and young, and because um, right. there's no such thing, you know, in Marvel there's no there's no uh, young black super high level power you know uh, character. And I'm like, who better to create this than Storm and Black Panther? You know, uh, that their, their offspring yeah. would be something that would be that powerful. So uh, Chidiki. So they, they had the opportunity, yeah. though, and you with young mm-hmm. mutants, but they didn't, they didn't do it. utilize that. Correct. I'm sorry. That, that's exactly my point. So uh, and then I, the, the daughter was I, I named her um, Folami. And I said that she was a daddy's girl. She was absolutely in love and very passionate, very loyal to Wakanda, wanted to be just like her father, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I, I, I said they, you know, her dynamic would be she would have arguments with her mother, you know, saying, why are you worried about the rest of the world? You know, Wakanda's right here. You, you know, you're needed here. <laughs> and, and it's like I, I got so excited right. with the possibilities. I mean, think of this real quick. A royal superhero family that would show up to a scene and yep. kick some butt, get back in their jet, go home into their own kingdom <laughs> and rule and their rule country. country. I was like, man, do you know how amazing that would have been? Um, and it could still right, be happening. Right. You can actually have this wonderful, but here's what I think. And unfortunately, I think this is the real truth of why it had, why they got divorced or why the, the writers up there said, let's divorce them. Suddenly, you have to show a loving family unit, and you have to show a wow. powerful family black unit, and you have to show a successful, you know, uh, n- you know, uh, non-drunk, you know, uh, the parents are together, they support their children. At least this is what I would have hoped they would have done. If, if, if showing all, if them staying together married meant that now they have a powerful legacy that young kids can now be introduced to via the, 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 the offspring of Black Panther and Storm. Suddenly there's some young, powerful superheroes that are, you know, in this, in this new Marvel, right. you know, set up. Now you're talking about some, well, that's, that's never been seen in, you know, in, in Marvel comics. 
that's right. a new barrier to break. I don't know of any 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 but, powerful uh, superhero families within Marvel that are black. No. And even that are powerful, they're they're still kind of, you know, disjointed Correct. in a way because either they're mutant powers or they you know, it's just I think the intent is they have to be flawed. You know, families can't be if you're a mutant or you're a superhero, it can't be, you know, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, they had a child, you know, and they have their issues in a sense, too. You know, all of these things is something Marvel wants to keep in that way. But the good thing about it, and don't give up on this, because the good thing about Marvel is there's alternate universes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it still right. can happen. It Things can always happen because if they want to capitalize yeah. on something, especially because of what uh, the cinematic universe is doing, they go back and start rewriting certain things too, which makes life interesting. Oh, yeah. So my conversation- Yeah, I think they're about to reboot it. They're about to reboot it again. Marvel yeah, is because of to, Disney. You know, they, they picked up the Fox. Right. Yeah. So yeah. what I told my wife, and you know, and a lot of guys, we were, you know, I always talk to my like, comic book friends, and I said- the Black Panther was to test the market to see if they can maximize enough black people doing Black History Month. If it failed, they didn't care because within the next couple of months, it's civil war. So that amount of money that they assumed they didn't recover from not having a blockbuster black movie, but you have enough money to say, hey, look, we did one. We did OK. And we'll see him in Civil War, but we'll maximize our money when the Civil War kicks in. I mean, not Civil War, Infinity Wars. Infinity I think War, they yeah. were putting their money on that and never if they kind of look past Black Panther. But they said, right. let's do the right thing by investing in it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a blockbuster, but let's invest in it. And I'll never say that we never invest in a black movie. I said mm -hmm. they look past this, my opinion, because if they didn't, they would have said, be prepared. This is going to be something amazing. But right. Well, I what I can add to that is because I agree to to uh, to, to absolutely say uh, what well, I guess, in my opinion, they said, listen, we're going to let we're gonna let uh because the, they listen to all of the, the 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 feedback all of the the blowback from the comics where they try mm -hmm. to just force you know uh ethnic characters and and you know let's just make that character black let's make that character black let's make that character black do y'all like this and it was still poorly written they were still you know one-dimensional poorly directed yeah mm -hmm. you know and and all of that blowback I think they heard every single bit of it and said, you know what, let's just give a black director. And it's almost like they took their hands off it and said, let's put all of the resources and we're going to take our hand off it. Because uh, mm -hmm. after seeing, man, I saw that movie six times. Uh, oh, what? Yeah, six times already. Uh, my, look, my partner saw it, I think he saw it 10 or 11. Um, but... Um, I honestly okay. do not believe that they that would have movie that movie would have been the same if there was not a Ryan Coogler directing that movie. Mm -hmm. There were things in there yeah. that only someone who cares about the message mm -hmm. behind Black Panther, not just the character, not just mm -hmm. the Marvel movie, not just the you know oh I get to direct a, an action movie with a black guy. Mm -hmm. Any other director mm -hmm. that didn't. Care. For millions Correct. of dollars. If any other director that did not care to actually send a message to not just one side of the argument, you know, but every side. Uh, Ryan Kruger sent a message right. to every side, whether you are pro this or pro that or, you know, uh, and he made a character. He made characters that were, that had revelations throughout this, this small block of time saying i'm mm -hmm. challenging what i thought was right um yep. uh, so that's that's always confused yeah. oh they showed the confusion and the struggle that he went right. through so take away and, and and this is what i keep every time i see it that i pick up a, a more because i'm on my third so you got me beat got right? <laughs> but um <laughs> but the fact that he was a world leader he had to deal with that then 
he was outside of his country dealing with other people with superpowers that he knows existed but still wanted to ostracize but they were getting into his country he has the ability to help because they had spies all around the world and once they got out of wakanda you saw that they struggled to say why aren't we doing something and he was able to show you emotionally how people changed and how things what they saw they said why aren't we doing anything these are our people and then he made uh michael b jordan the us right the, yep. the us yep on that side that was us saying look we got to take back you know what they did right. to us for years we got to get that back and he said put all our <laughs> anger put everything that we feel that we've been mm-hmm. hurt for years and put it into michael b jordan right. to bring it back and i yeah. it was just I, phenomenal can you imagine that coming from anybody <laughs> that didn't care about that man nope. and they and, and my, my point is to nope. to marvel uh what like i said i think they took their hands off of it they said listen I don't think we can do this. It's honestly, I believe they had a conversation that said, listen, <laughs> after all of this feedback about these comics and, and everything else, somehow they got it right in Civil War. I'm not sure who helped them get it right. Yeah. Um, but, okay. No, that's yeah, the Russo winning. brothers. And the, Rus- the Russo brothers are really good because they did the yes, Winter yes. Soldier. Love that. Love that. Uh, that, that. That whole movie. Love that yep. one. Love Civil War. Like I bought Civil War as soon as it, it came mm-hmm. out, just so I can go back slowly <laughs> and uh, look at. Okay, let me let me just double check because they got Black Panther way, way right, and everything else in that movie was was yep. well directed. I'm like, how do you introduce something as powerful as Black Panther and still tell a good story? Uh, outside of that, I was like, wait a minute, let me just yeah. break this down. But um, that's the, that's what I honestly think they said. Listen we're not even going to try to get this right. Let's just let somebody that understands it. They could have did all the research in the world and they never would have got that same narrative mm-hmm. correct. Advisors. They could have, we got enough advisors so we can create what we need. But I agree with you. They said, we don't need the advisors. Yeah. Let's get the right people yes. and give it to them. And here's the money because <laughs> we got the money now. Right. It's not that we don't have the money. Yep. This time we're going to have to give it to them. And when you got a black director, black writer, black women doing cinematography, all of these people that's involved in there, there are black actors that was waiting in line to say, I want to be in this movie. Can you imagine the amount of people that wanted to be in there, but he couldn't give them the opportunity to be in the movie? Because even if it didn't make this kind of money, it's still historic. Regardless, it's historic. It's still, yeah, the first time they've done it. Yeah. That that's still on the line. That's you, you, like you can you cannot say Blade. Yeah, had the same had the same situation. It did not. No, it wasn't ninety percent black actors on that set. You <laughs> know, they didn't have two hundred million dollars. Yep. He. It was a great movie. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed oh, yeah. Blade. Um, you know, really, really loved the movie. Loved Wesley Snipes did a great job. Wesley was trying to get this movie made yeah. back then. You know, he was fighting to get this movie made back in the day. But it um, wasn't time. That's that's the kind of thing to say. You know, it wasn't. It just mm-hmm. wasn't. They would, you know, looking back at Blade. You know, the effects of Blade was all right. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> if you're trying to sell Wakanda <laughs> in all of its beauty, this this was the right time to do it. So um, no, I'm, I'm almost positive. Now here, here's to answer your question. I'm sorry. Going back to that, I say what Marvel should be, you know, and I, I have my own personal views on this because I have an I'm affinity, asking, like I said. All I'm asking, that's all. Yeah, I, I got an affinity towards Storm. I would honestly say that because Wonder Woman came out last year, wasn't it? Yep, last year. Um, and DC had proved historically again first time they've ever had a female high budget you know Directive. centered mm-hmm. superhero movie was with, with that movie they proved hey that worked yep. right Marvel hasn't done that no there's been very other very few other productions that have done that now follow me now you got 
Black Panther just is gonna make a billion dollars, okay? Yep. And it was African centered, okay? Now, similar to what they did in uh, Civil War, you had this great story being told and you introduced a brand new character, powerful uh, and, and, and as regal as he was, they somehow introduced Black Panther as a, yep. as a supporting character to this already amazing film roster, right? So mm -hmm. in my personal opinion, Black Panther 2, should have the introduction of an adult, powerful, African storm. Not on the X-Men yet. This is just my opinion. Just follow me. Okay, so you got, mm. you know, an African goddess, okay, which lives, you know, maybe not too far outside the scope of Wakanda. And you have Black Panther 2. This is now, you're going into who's, who is T'Challa, you know, dealing with now. And right. you have the introduction of Storm, and she's actually meeting Black Panther for the first time. She's a supporting character, similar to what they did with Justice League, but just like way better. So, um, right. way better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, you yeah. have the groundwork as now that they got Fox, you have the groundwork to recreate this character before she's an X Men. In her African, mm. you know, glory, she's worshipped as a goddess in the comic, you know, uh, right. before Charles Xavier gets to her. Um, and you can now build this this wonderful world out around this brand new, powerful, wonderful character that's been in, in comics forever. And to my mm -hmm. own personal effect, I've deleted every X-Men movie that she's been in because it wasn't done right. Holly Bear is a nice lady. None of them. She's a nice lady, yeah. but you, you you deleted everything about who Storm was. She had no no yeah. African accent, no heritage about her. Nothing was regal, in my opinion. But but none of her power right. was potent like it like it should have been exactly. anyway. So it was like, oh, I can just make it rain and just blow Electricity some wind. Electricity from a hand. And she's extremely, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, she's extremely powerful. She's she's a but step right under Omega they, level because she can't. You know, she faints mm -hmm. in the comic. If she uses too much energy, right. she uses too much power. She literally faints. So she can't be classified as old Meg, but she's right underneath there. She can freeze a whole country if she right. wanted to. You know, monsoons, whatever you exactly. need, all that stuff. She can do that. Um, so if you introduce Storm in the Black Panther 2, right, you're setting up mm -hmm. something that has never occurred, which is a Black powerful female solo superhero film. I need to see Storm in her own feature. I need to see that. I want to see it now. Right. Because if you know yeah. you get Ryan Kruger back, you get whoever, <laughs> you know, get him back on it. Um and you you mm -hmm. you're talking about how many people, how many women, how many families need to see that for the first time in history. If you make yep. history with Black Panther I say, do it again. Show that black, powerful woman. Blow the world up, man. Uh, I would watch that six plus times as well. I'm going to buy the DVD. Um, but that's where I think yep. history is going next. They, uh, I saw some post on Facebook, I think, and they was uh, saying which, which, which character needs the, um, they called it the, the, the Black Panther glow up, I believe it was. And of course, Storm was in the roster. Mm -hmm. They had Luke Cage. They had Blade. They had all of these other yeah. characters, and I'm like, mm, listen, <laughs> if I need, I need, a, need powerful, a powerful, beautiful, we need a brand new actress yeah. that can rock that, that. I mean, blow that role out the water, man, and really, really walk on that scene. Yep. I want to see her flying. I want to see her, you know, uh, tornadoes around her. I want to imagine the scope of that film mm -hmm. if done right. So it's the director. If they don't get the right female or woman or black woman to say, this is how goddess queens should look like and be worship yep. strength and everything. This is how it should be. If you don't yep. introduce it in that way, then you're going to have a problem. But I think I, I know you saying the next Black Panther, but why not Infinity Wars 2? Well, oh, to introduce Storm? Well, yeah. Because that's a great opportunity 
to segue right. a lot of the Fox character to the universe. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's because that, that's that opportunity, I think, to start sprinkling little, I mean, because you can push some people away back from Civil War. I know they're doing Dark Phoenix at the end of this year, but uh, I think that you might as well just throw that away because they're getting I ready. Just, I want them to delete it. Yeah, I, know. I want to <laughs> somehow delete their whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> and just create the right universe yeah. because right. They, they need to do a full length movie for Luke Cage now. I'm down with that. Yeah, they have to. Because if they don't, yeah. then you know Netflix is fine. I think Netflix did the best job with yeah. Daredevil and actually yeah. um, Jessica Jones. They did a good job with Luke Cage, but I think right the real Luke Cage needs to be on the screen because yep. he was a bulletproof, strong black man. That's all he was. That's not Luke right. Cage fights Hulk. That's how strong right. he is. Correct. Correct. And they didn't they didn't give him that credit. So that's why I was kind of in between on that. But um Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I love Luke Cage. Uh and I got to watch it with my wife. And um I kinda warned her. I said, mm. uh, well, it goes good up until Cottonmouth leaves the ship. <laughs> uh, yeah. everything after that, man, it's just kind of a downhill. <laughs> okay. And she's like, What are you talking right. about? I'm like, you'll see. You'll see. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it, it, for me, it just it, it did that that fall off. And your character, yeah, uh, Cottonmouth was a great character yeah. for that show. Oh, yeah. He 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 actually yes. that that's what excited me about the show. I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm feeling this dude. Um, and mm -hmm. as you get to the the, the the few episodes in, right before he actually gets, uh, I don't. It's, it's been too long for anyone listening, and I'm spoiling this for you. Uh, you should have been on your, your P's and Q's. Uh, but and, yeah, and when Cottonmouth dies, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You should have saw this by now. Um, right. When he gets killed, right before he gets killed, they do the same thing they did in this Black Panther film, which is suddenly you validate that this is not an evil person. Right. You know, he was influenced right. by some really, really traumatizing stuff. He was mm -hmm. actually, you know, uh, he was raised by some some very trauma, you know, traumatizing circumstances. But is he as evil? a child? Yeah, correct. Yeah, is he evil for that, or is he just a product of his making and his surroundings? Mm -hmm. And suddenly, I'm like, wait a minute, dog. They doing some good directing. I like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he. You know, and I'm and, and I'm I'm did. getting I'm getting excited. I'm rubbing up my mittens. I'm like, this is gonna be good. This is a good <laughs> character. And lo and behold. As soon as they, uh, as soon as that scene came, I said, "Wait, wait, wait! This this must be like a dream sequence, right?" She's mad, yeah, yeah. and uh, they yeah. gonna, did they really do this? She gonna wake up? Yeah. She gonna wake up? <laughs> nope, she's not waking up. <laughs> so, yeah, that Sad. it went off from there. But right. I, I'm with you. Um, now, Infinity War to introduce Storm would be, it's absolutely possible, but mm. again, you're talking about a roster that has well over 15 superheroes already in it. Mm -hmm. And so... So that's this one, though. I mean, part two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can drop off a couple of people. For example, <laughs> Doctor Strange and his crew. Right. I don't need to see you, bro. We, we got the mystic <laughs> part. Eh, we're okay. Ant-Man and your girl. Eh, we, y'all can... We're gonna drop them off. Can, eh, we could drop them off. <laughs> we got to introduce... The Fox folks, I got because you. we need a great, great, and I mean great, yeah. director for the Fantastic Four. Yeah, man. Who's I with tell all you what. Ways. I tell you what, that's that's the reality of it. Now, now in my, let me ask you this. Okay. This is a question. Uh, now we 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 nerd now a little bit. Yeah, right? we nerd now. Y'all bear with us. <laughs> yeah, y'all y'all bear with us now. <laughs> so let me, because they're doing a phase. What is it? Phase five or phase four? Phase, phase four. four. Yeah. Phase four. Okay. Now, if you say that Infinity War 2 mm -hmm. is going to mark the end of phase three, so to speak, right? Right. Uh, and you have all of these so called movies that are going to follow up, you know, the introduction, the new stuff, they just got the, you know, Fox stuff, right? Right. Um, to me, the only way 
that you can honestly top everything that these what is it 18 plus films that they that they've done in Marvel at this point is mm -hmm. to correct the wrong that has been done to some of the most iconic characters in the actual Marvel history which is X -Men, okay. which right. is you know the Fantastic 4 which is yep. you know um what Spider-Man well on Spider-Man's done he's good um, but you know what I mean? You know, like these, these yeah, no, no, I got they messed up the most the iconic, silver surfer. Exactly. Most iconic yeah. characters that's, you know, uh, began it all to me. I think that would shake the world up again and say, OK, well, wait a minute. You, you, they have unlimited funds to do this. Mm -hmm. The world is yeah. now prepared to say, OK, listen, rinse and repeat. Y'all, y'all did that for some reason. Y'all wanted those characters. You spent all that money. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to shake the world up with that? And like, I agree. Fantastic Four, you know, would be a um, it, if done right. You get Doctor Doom right. Uh, oh you know yeah. What I'm saying uh, the, the good villain yep. has to be done right. Now you can challenge mm -hmm. these powerful characters. But X Men has so much so much in that world that they can mm -hmm. literally say no we're doing absolutely three movies i don't care what nobody says but uh <laughs> everybody's an adult i don't want none of this teenage garbage i need rogue mm -hmm. to be an adult i need the danger room to be real i need sentinels to look like sentinels i don't want them no sentinels look like sentinels yeah, exactly. i want i oh want uh yep. cyclops to feel like a leader of a team man uh make me I want his brother to survive. Yes. I want Banshee. Yes. I want Havoc. I want all of them. And that, that would, to me, yeah. I would I would be a kid like I was in the 90s when the cartoon came on. Uh, again, you can, mm -hmm. I don't care how long it takes. I'd be 45, 55, 60. I would turn right back. Yeah, I'm I would be waiting. right back to 1990-something in front of that movie theater like oh they done did it this is what i'm talking about they done <laughs> did it <laughs> exactly that's what i'm thinking man so yeah. hey, marcus man um i don't <laughs> i can Go talk on. to you all night long and i won't do that to you but uh uh we're gonna have to revisit it again uh i'm gonna try to do some things also with uh with your art i want to make sure people know because you're in deviant on it as well oh right? man i use deviant art like a stepchild um i haven't been back on that site okay. in so long um what okay. what i would say uh instagram um facebook and twitter i actually have gotcha tumblr but i treat that like a stepchild as well i just share stuff to tumblr i don't even reply to people on tumblr so i, I apologize Anybody out there that is following? Those are nice people on there, bro. There's some nice people on there. Come so on. I went back to it. I was like, I got that many followers on Tumblr? This is great. Like, what? Yeah, What's going I feel bad yeah, for them. Yeah. I, don't, I don't do nothing on Tumblr. <laughs> but um, yeah, Mar right, Marcus right. the Visual. Marcus the Visual uh, is is my you know my, my tag. But uh, I have not mm -hmm. been on DeviantArt in, I, I can honestly say, like a year or two. So... Whatever you okay, see on there, okay. but still great stuff on there because when you introduce, <laughs> you still got some great stuff on there, cool, bro. Cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Twitter, uh, Instagram, yes. Facebook, and your website, MarcusTheVisual.com. Yes, um, amazing artist, Thank illustrator. Um, you, you saw we uh, we <laughs> we nerd yeah. out, we geeked out for the last there you go. 20 minutes or so, but uh, that, we didn't even get into oh, yeah, anime. No, next, time, look, so. next time on Dragon Ball Z, we will get in there. Uh, yep, yep, <laughs> exactly. We'll get into it. But uh, Marcus, I really enjoyed this. I, I, I really yeah. appreciate your time. Um, I'm really going to um, push to get people to understand that you talk about our history and, 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 you know, uplifting our people with your, with your art. And there's not a lot of people that I see doing it. Some people right. go for the money and try to say, Hey, how can I make my money and work for Marvel? You don't have to work for these people. You can work for yourself and, um, and bring a lot to our community and our children and adults to reeducate us as well. So I really wanted to have you on, and I appreciate all that you've given to me. I appreciate the opportunity. Well. Um, I agree, uh, one hundred percent. The the biggest problem, and there's nothing wrong with working for Marvel and DC because it is a good opportunity to 
you know, get your get your portfolio out there. Oh, yeah. You get notoriety, especially if you're if you get to work on some uh, really really nice uh, projects. Um, however, um, talking to a lot of these artists and writers, man, you you get a sandbox. You get a template of what they want you to do, mm-hmm. and there's very little room for inserting, like what 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 uh, Ryan Ryan did with Black Panther. You don't. There's not a very big opportunity yep. to insert real true messages that resonate with the people that read it. Mm-hmm. It has to be in con- in a in a in a context that they approve. So if they don't like what you're trying to insert, it doesn't get that that gets changed. It gets edited out, um, and you have to follow that that template. So um, speaking to even those those some of the people that work for those companies, man, it's 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 not as much of a dream job as you think it is in terms of being creative and trying to make a change. So you, you may work on Luke Cage, you may work on, you know, Falcon, whatever, but it's in the context of what they want to say. Uh, Ta-Nehisi. Yep. And you can't, you can't call out of the lines. Ta-Nehisi Coates just did a piece uh, and I, I, I can, I know you're wrapping up, but um, just, just did a story where, you know, Wakanda, um, the history of Wakanda goes back to ancient times, uh, even even like super ancient, and it's uh, it's an alien race that was there mm-hmm. before Africans, you know, African human beings, you know, wanted the wanted that land, and right. you know, they wrote a story that apparently, hopefully, it's not canon, but it may be. Um, apparently, the the African human or the African mm-hmm. humans fought and killed these these aliens that inhabited, yeah, that inhabited the Wakandan, aliens. you know, area wow. and slaughtered them and burned them out and all this stuff. And, right, you right. know, uh, like there can't be this, yeah, no, they were just, they were just African people, you know, that just lived here all along, you know, mm-hmm. suddenly we have to correct. Yeah. We had to murder somebody to get the land and right. that doesn't make it's why can't you just have it where people, you know, we was here in the beginning, you know, and just let that ride. We, 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 we kind of yeah. came from yeah. the birth of humanity and it, it stayed pure. It stayed healthy. Mm-hmm. It stayed within itself. So that kind of stuff right there got a lot of blowback for a good reason. Who, who came up with that is what I said. Who mm-hmm. was that kind of easy or was that Marvel or the writers right. of Marvel? So um, the freedom of being an independent is there is no one telling you, you can inspire the people that way. You can do it any way you want to. It is yep. possibly the most rewarding work of my life because I'm doing it for the same reason I'm raising my kids with that mentality. You know, I know what they can be and, and what, what I want them right. to be inspired by. And that is looking back at your ancestors. Find out why you're powerful. You didn't get here by yourself. I didn't get here by myself. It's on, it's on the backs and blood and, and sweat and tears and blood of all of our, our, our most powerful ancestors that got us to where we are. You're nothing without your history because you're going you're gonna to toil and try to figure it out and you're going to stumble right. on ignorance. And it, it doesn't have to be that way. So um, I appreciate the time, brother. I definitely appreciate the talk. Um, I don't get to nerd out with, with too many other people. So... <laughs> I know, I know. You uh, had me jumping in my chair over here. I was like, yep, yep. Right. So, no, we're good together. You know, Ant-Man may come out. I don't know. Right. But I, right. I'll definitely have you on when Infinity Wars come on. So uh, I would appreciate definitely it. Definitely got to talk uh, about that. And uh, any new things that come out, just just hit me up. And I um, right. definitely want to get you promoted out there because I love what you're doing, brother. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you. This is the Minorities Report podcast and see us twice a month, twice a month. We every other Monday. So if you're going to check us out, um, I'm going to have some of his art up um, so you can get a taste of that. But I really want you to reach out in Tuskegee Airs and the Supernatural. That's the next one I got to get to. So. <laughs> Get those, collect them. Just don't collect them. Buy two. Damn it. Buy two of them. Read one and educate with the other. But, uh, well, we appreciate your time and we thank Marcus and we'll see you next time on the Minorities Report podcast. Peace. <laughs>